Hey everyone, Dalton Dave over here, the dorky talking black guy is just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of Talking Topics. Here, I basically talk about a subject matter for a given period of time. Now, I need you guys to keep in mind that everything that I say in the Talking Topics are my biased opinion. They are not based on any fact or, you know, anything relevant. These are just things that are from my observation my experience, things that I've read, and things that I've heard. So, alright, I kind of don't want to do this video, you know, because it might come off wrong. But, you know, this is something I need to address. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I actually have a particular attraction, you know, or... An environment, well, I said environment, oh boy, that came off really well. But, like, you know, I have an interest in Japan, actually. And that interest has actually been around since I was a teenager when, like, you know, I was in a martial art class. And I actually realized that, like, I actually like the Japanese martial arts a little bit more than the Chinese ones, you know, like Kung Fu. Like, I actually, my favorite martial arts style are the karate styles, you know. So, I figured, you know, I want, when I first went to college, I wanted to try to major in Japanese, I mean minor in Japanese, you know, but uh, my school didn't have the Japanese language, you know, they just had Eastern Studies, you know, which I took briefly and then 9-11 um, happened, but the side, getting beyond that, you know, the thing is like, you know, I still have this interest in Japan that I fully intend to explore, you know, in fact, I'm actually working on a 10-year research project to actually be, you know, better informed about Japanese cu Japanese culture and some of the history in Japan, you know. Now, this project is, A, for my own personal understanding, but B, it's also because there's something creative that I want to do that I hope I can actually release in another couple of years, you know. If you want to know about that, then you can just hit me up in direct messenger on, like, you know, social media or, you know, Facebook or Twitter. But, so I'm taking this research project serious. And basically, I actually explained this to, I talking to somebody at work about this. And then a lady at my job of Asian descent, she overheard and she, and she just said, just don't pull Logan Paul. Okay, and then I went to a Japanese festival to basically that was to explain about the upcoming you know New Year you know and I got there late and I know how the Japanese are about when you get there late but then I didn't know that I I was supposed to be there from the beginning so kind of looked bad on me I was like and I apologized you know and then one person you know from the admissions area, she just, she just said, well, as long as you're not doing another Logan Paul. Okay, so, yeah, basically, if you're a Gaijin, you're actually being compared to Logan Paul right now, which really stinks. Now, it's bad enough, like, you know, uh, I would be not only a Gaijin, right, but I would be a Kuraijin, you know, basically a black person and everything. So I would be a Kurai Gaijin, you know, black foreigner, which kind of sounds a little intimidating and a little scary because, to be frank, um, from what I've seen in, like, you know, I've seen a bit of a duality, you know, and be me being African American. In the United States, like, there are some stereotypes that I actually have to see in the media, but I kind of see them exaggerated in Japan a little bit more, you know. For example, when you hardly see, um, when they talk about gaijins, you know, they talk about uh, an American gaijin, when you're talking about a fighting game, you usually see them you know, interacting with a Caucasian person 
on friendly terms, you know. Not so much in Japan, you know. You know, when you watch a... When you play a, job, a video game, a fighting game straight from Japan, pay closer attention, you know. With the exception of Raven from Tekken that I'm aware of, every semi, any, every semi-competent or favorable fighter that is of black or has dark skin, they're from Brazil, actually. Like... You know, when someone is more of an antagonist that is, like, you know, black and African-American in a fighting game, you know, they're normally from the United States, all right? And what one example and another example of basically black, African, black African-Americans black African and everything basically being stereotyped and typecast, you know, Look at the Dara Live series and look at most fighting games. Usually you see them as either boxers or kickboxers, you know. Now like now like I said, you know, that's normally the black American ones, but the Afro Cubans, you know, or actual actual Af Africans, you see them actually basically as capoeira stylists or a form of karate, you know. Elena from Street Fighter, for example, Capoeira Stylist, and directly from Africa. You look at Bob Wilson from Dado Densets, Fatal Fury, you know, Capoeira Stylist. You look at, you know, Eddie Gordo, and you also look at, you know, Christina, Capoeira Stylist, you know. When you look at Marcos Rodriguez, aka Kusunu Butt in America. In um, God of Mark of the Wolves. Karate stylist, but he's straight from Brazil. You know? Now, there are some people that actually don't follow that fold. There's actually one character that I'm aware of that's African American and doesn't follow that fold. That's a karate stylist. And that's Lucky Glover. You know? And Lucky Glover is in the King of Fighters series. Well, just maybe two games. But uh, not the best track record. And normally when I watch an anime, yeah, with the exception of Afro Samurai, yeah, we're not seen in the best light. And to top it off, basically, what, I, what I'm what i finding on the internet when basically we talk about, when blacks talk about Japan, African Americans themselves, they feel really uncomfortable in Japan. Or they feel like, you know, the Japanese, like, you know, they're just a gaijin and everything. And as a black gaijin, they're seen as less favorable. Now, some of these calls can be, um, I can say, highly exaggerated. You know, but there are two people from Japan that I actually follow very closely, you know, on YouTube. Um, one is Yuta, the Japanese guy. And another one is Nobita uh, from his channel, Find Your Love. Now, both of these two actually, well, Yuta still does this more so, but, you know, basically both of these two, they used to go out in public a lot and ask random questions. And here's, a here's something that doesn't shock me, though. A lot of them seemed indifferent to African or black Americans, you know, or blacks. They seemed indifferent. But, you know... <clears throat> I also noticed that they ask these people in major cities. Now, if you're asking these people in major cities, people in major cities tend to be a little more diverse, you know, so they have more favoring opinions. But then you get to the halfus, you know, for those that don't know, the halfus are basically half Japanese, half another, uh, another ethnicity, you know. There tends to be a controversy, and I can't believe I forgot the Miss Japan that's um, a hafu, whom is ha who has an African, African, a black father, whom is supposed to represent Japan in the beauty contest and became Miss Jap Japan. There was a bit of a controversy with her, you know, and the thing is, it's like, huh, okay, so she's darker skinned and... A lot of people in Japan didn't want to represent it. Okay, not a surprise, you know. 
But then as I drilled down, you know, I saw a bit of a duology. You know, a lot of people in Japan that were from the cities were more favorable than the people from the rural areas, which kind of similar. And going back to the YouTube topics, you know, the two guys I follow, I noticed that Nobuta, you know, from Find Your Love in Japan, he pays closer attention and he gets a lot of flack. He does controversial videos and people call him a racist. And I'm going to say this flat out. Nobuta does not come off as a racist, but he does come off as having a racial prejudice against African Americans. And it's not that it's intentional, it's just by things that he's seen and actually the degree of the negative reaction. So I personally feel that his approach is kind of misguided or misinformed because he's also he's mostly received negative feedback. And some of his positive feedback has not been from African Americans or black has not been the best. And especially mine, you know, I'm not one that represents very, very well for my ethnicity, you know, you're not going to see me say, you know, like being pro-black and displaying like, you know, the positives of it, but especially there was one thing where he said like, you know, from what he's gathered, a lot of the crimes are in black areas and that are caused by blacks, you know, in the United States, and um, I saw some people commenting, stating that basically, that is not a that is a poor representation and and a inflated representation. While some of the Caucasians, well, I'm assuming they're Caucasians, they're saying that number two is coming with facts and people don't dispute facts, which I got a bit of digression for most of those people that said that. Are you paying attention to how our president is acting when he's being addressed with facts? And he's not actually addressing them or calls them fake facts or fake news. Just need to bring that out there. But a lot of things that Nobita has actually addressed are from the FBI. And, you know, the FBI director at the time, when it came to race relations, he actually said this is the information he has. But it is not accurate because, you know, all this information that he has, it is not basically proportional because most African Americans don't actually report things, you know, so a lot of things that James Comey had to go on, he even himself said that this is not substantial data because basically it's an out, it's only an outlier, but it is not being conducted thoroughly enough because most of this information he has found to be manipulated by certain police officers. So, you know, he can't justly go by that information because he knows it's not accurate. So, there are different levels of how blacks are viewed in Japan, you know. My personal take is that basically, if I display a genuine like, concern, and understanding, I am not going to be seen as negative. Now, if I talk, now, talking about dating or anything... Um, number one, I'm already involved, so I'm not even looking at, at that aspect. But number two, you know, if I was looking at that aspect, um, I would be going to Japan for the wrong reasons. Because, like, by intention to learn about Japan and be more informed, it's more because I really admire and like the country. And I want to learn more about it, you know. But that's my take. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter at Token Dave 80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. And I'll catch all of you later.